Hello, welcome to Life Under Lockdown today for the first time in this series. We're in the great country of Wales in the Diocese of Menevia with Canon Jason Jones. Welcome, Canon. Thank you very much. Thank you. So you're one of the dioceses which, are, well, in fact, like every diocese is going to be involved, but in particular, it's very good to see that Wales is involved with the Rosary Rally this Sunday. Can you tell us more details about it? Yes, yeah, so next Sunday, last day of the month of May, month of Our Lady, of course, we have the great feast of Pentecost. And many of us have been, or still are these days, keeping the great novena for Pentecost and doing exactly what the apostles did, going to Our Lady, going to the upper room, time for prayer, time for reflection, uh, and finishing then our novena uh, this year, falling on the last day of May, uh, the feast of Pentecost, with Our Lady and asking then for an outpouring upon our countries of the gifts and the fruits uh, of the Holy Spirit. So it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity that this year the whole novena should take place uh, in May, in Our Lady's month, and that we can be with her and bring so many, many different intentions, as well, of course, as the intentions of the, the present pandemic uh, to her motherly care and intercession. Absolutely. Do you think it's providential that just during this time of, of worry and fear and, and suffering and death, we're having this feast day? In fact, the visitation as well is also occurring on the same day. We're having this convergence of Marian feast days and the Pentecost. What do you think this yeah. spiritual is? Yeah. I'm all, as well as being a parish priest and looking after the shrine uh, of divine mercy here for Menevia Diocese. My other role is as a Catholic chaplain at our local hospital. And so there we've had, sadly, about 28 uh, Catholics have died with COVID. So I've been involved with them and their families. And so there is a very much a fear, uncertainty, anxiety. Uh, lots. When we think of the gifts and the fruits of the Holy Spirit, uh, we can see how in our lives we are living the opposites of all of those things. And stress, uh, lack of peace. You know, somebody said... The, um, it's a, the COVID is a disease. And when we break down that word disease, we get dis-ease. Mm. And of course, the great joy of Pentecost is peace. The, even the symbol of Pentecost, the dove, is the symbol of peace. So in our dis-ease at this time, we have this wonderful gift of peace uh, through Pentecost, uh, the peace of Our Lady uh, encouraging us, giving us hope. Uh, so that we never lose heart and that uh, all of these great feasts in May, uh, Our Lady of Fatima, May the 13th, Our Lady of the Christians on the 24th, the Visitation, now this coming Sunday, as well as Pentecost. Uh, Our Lady has been there throughout this time of the pandemic to, well, to stand with us at our cross. And as she stood, so she can give us that strength to, to be united and to, 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 to go forward. Of course, everyone's invited to be involved in this. How is it going to pan out for yourselves in Menevia and elsewhere? How do, how do people get involved? Do Catholics in Wales, for example, get involved in this Rosary Rally? Yeah. So it's beginning at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning, and it's all of the diocese and also the Syrah Malabar Eparchy, the Polish Mission, the Ukrainian Church in Great Britain, and also the Bishop Prick of the Forces. Uh, all of these, these are the main, well, all of the Catholic... Uh, establishment hierarchy in Great Britain, they'll all be involved. So from 9 a.m. until 9 p.m., there will be um, a relay, uh, uh, handing on, as it were, um, the rosary to the next diocese. So each diocese, uh, at a particular time, next Sunday, uh, the Pentecost Sunday, is allocated um, a specific time uh, so that we can all join in. And as one diocese finishes, another can then take up uh, the rosary. So there'd be one, as it says in the Acts of the Apostles, they continued in continuous prayer with Mary, the mother of Jesus. And therefore, Sunday is a day which we can live out that scripture passage, being with Our Lady, handing on the prayer to the next diocese, continuous prayer. So for us in Menevia Diocese, uh, each night for the month of May, we've had uh, our May devotion, uh, so at 8 p.m. Uh, on YouTube, uh, our own YouTube channel, Divine Mercy Wales, and our Facebook, Menevia Diocesan Shrine of Divine Mercy, we have a live streaming of the Holy Rosary. 
uh, together with the two prayers requested by the Holy Father for the month of May. And at the moment, we have also our Novena prayer uh, for, hope, for Pentecost to the Holy Spirit. So we are going to finish on Sunday with a, an extended a holy hour before we hand over then to Bishop John Keenan, who will close uh, the national event then on Sunday. Wonderful. And do you, do you sense in, in your work on, in the hospital on the ground that where there's a physical battle in a sense with, with COVID and the fact that we have to distance and lock down things, do you sense that there's a growing spiritual battle taking place? And do you think that people are turning more towards the question of faith and prayer? Absolutely, because uh, in the hospital setting, many of the hospital workers, frontliners, are Filipino or from the Keralite community, so are members of the Sira Malabar. Uh, eparchy. Uh, I've been there for nearly 10 years uh, and I always promote the, the divine mercy and so in the intensive care units where most of our COVID patients were uh, there was a, a divine mercy image sellotaped to all of the, the ventilators. So it was a great great tool for evangelization because I was going in daily. Uh, the hospital gave me full access to the PPE and so it wasn't just seeing the Catholic patients, but also to encourage the nurses, many of whom have no contact with the church, but they were just delighted that the church, uh, in the words of Pope Francis, was accompanying uh, the people uh, and not abandoning the people. And I think that struck uh, many, many hearts. And certainly since maybe the last month, uh, more people who I don't usually speak with, are certainly acknowledging me or smiling. There's been a number of large events to commemorate some, of, sadly, some of the NHS uh, nurses who are Catholics who have died. Mm. Uh, and, uh, oops, sorry. Are you okay, still there? Continue on. Yeah. Somebody just tried to phone me then. Uh, so there's been a number of people who've um, have spoken to me because of the large events I've had to organise as tributes mm. for some of the Catholic staff uh, who have died. Uh, and so people I wouldn't necessarily have had contact with. So people are searching, they are asking and stopping me in the corridor in the hospital and saying, oh, nice to see you here. Um, we're glad you're here. So it's been really, really in encouraging. That's wonderful. Thank you very much for, you, for your witness and also your bravery at this time as well, because people forget a lot of the times that priests are also, in essence, frontline workers. So um, I'll thank you very much for your time, Canon. And of course, we'll encourage everyone who's watching this, especially those in Wales and, and England and Scotland, to, to be involved fully in this prayer for the Rosary, which will, I think, turn the tide on, on we hope, on this pandemic and the course of it and their recovery as a nation. So I'll let you go, and I'm sure you're a very busy man with your phone calls coming through, so I'll let you go and get on with those. <laughs> very much. Uh, yeah, so 9am to 9pm Sunday, and there's a list of intentions. Uh, and so Carfin in Scotland, uh, Walsingham, the Rosary Shrine, uh, the Shrine here for Divine Mercy, we're all promoting it. So it'll be a great, great day of prayer, uh, and let's hope Our Lady will, will visit us with the Holy Spirit this, this coming Sunday. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you.